Up until this point, 2022 for Warframe has been dominated by the same old area of effect meta. AoE weapons are fantastic, single target weapons are, well, less so. So seeing a brand new single target prime weapon get released has got me all a quiver. Get it? Quill? Quiver? I'm sorry. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Hysterix Prime. I got a standard build, something that a more casual or newer Tenno can get into, but fear not, we also got the end game set up with Prime mods, galvanized mods, we're gonna be taking this one to Steel Path, see what it's actually capable of. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Hystrix Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Hysterix Prime is a projectile based secondary weapon and this is the signature weapon of Korra Prime or Korra. And in her hands it has a special ability, an 8% chance to instantly reload on headshots only. Which as far as these gimmicks are concerned, that is pretty good. Now the projectile has travel time as you can see and that travel time will cause you to lead your targets. The accuracy is okay but the animation is kind of funky, take a look at the quills themselves. While they don't have a physical representation on the board, they kind of jump over the crosshairs and then land on it. Almost like you're lobbing them across, you see that? And the projectile speed itself is not exactly fantastic so as I said leading your targets can be a thing. But that's not all which is kooky about the Hysterix. This one can change its element. Right now I am using a fire quill. Take a look at the lower right hand side of the screen. If I press my secondary fire, that's gonna be middle mouse button for PC users. It goes to electric quill. One more time, ice quill. One more time, poison quill. So it cycles through all the elements that you got in Warframe. Well, all the elementals that is. And that's pretty much it of a functionality, there's not a lot you can complain outside of that projectile travel speed. Now the quills are not exactly super visible and for me that is a bit annoying. If you go poison, it's got like this poison track which in missions, let's be honest, with all the special effects on your screen, you're not gonna be able to see. The fire one a little bit of a fire thing, the electric one a bit of a blue thing, and the ice one a little bit of a less blue thing, I guess. The reload is quick so there's that going for the Hysterix Prime. We're gonna have a comparison between the normal version and this one, just so we can see exactly how big of a buff we got. Accuracy is the same, fire rate is the same, magazine, the same, noise, the same, reload is faster, wow, a 0.1 increase, which technically is a decrease, because, you know, faster reload speed and all whatnot. Trigger automatic as before, more critical chance, another 4%, and believe it or not, the biggest buff to the Hysterix is that status chance. Before the Hysterix was kinda eh, not only because it's a single target weapon, but also because the status chance was only at 10%. And when you got a low base, there's not a lot to work with in Warframe because opposed to critical chance, we don't really have bonus additive after status chance effects, not all that many, at least not for range weapons, so do better that one in mind. Damage is better as well, it gave it what, 10, 20, 30%? About 30% increase there, not bad, not bad. Definitely like it, wait, is it? Uh, about between 20 and 30% extra. And of course, this will carry on through all of the quills, you got a special damage entry for each of the quills. Now let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is gonna be 60 out of 60, and if your comes with a measly 30 out of 30, you jump into actions and you install the Auto King Catalyst. You gotta bear in mind the following. If you are a newer player coming into the game and you just bought the Korra Prime access pack that comes with the Hysterix, you should have uh, this catalyst already installed. And second, this is a single target weapon and today's meta is AoE. If that doesn't bother you, by all means, invest in the Hysterix. You're gonna need 2 to 3 Forma depending on the mods that you have available to you. The Hysterix by default comes with 2 V polarities, they are called Madurai and they are most often used when it comes to range and melee weapons for that matter. So all you need is like 1 or 2 Forma maximum. You go to 3 if you got all the Galvanized and Prime mods, you go to 4 if you got a Riven. Rivens for this weapon however are not worth it since the Riven disposition for brand new weapons is set to only 1 out of 5. When it comes to arcanes, you should definitely unlock the empty arcane slot here. There are two great arcanes to be used with this one. Secondary Deadhead, which will give you fully stacked up 360% damage for 24 seconds. You get the 30% headshot multiplier and the minus 50% weapon recoil. 
From my humble point of view, this is still best in slot. Today, however, we're gonna showcase it with Cascadia Flare, because this one offers you 480% damage. But there are some negatives to this one, which I will outline just a tad later. In the Exilus slot, you know what, you can leave this one locked if you so desire, but believe it or not, lethal momentum actually makes a big difference on the weapon, less leading your targets because the projectiles will be a whole lot faster. If you got any ammo issues, you can go with something like pistol ammo mutation if you want to, but it's really not needed, I would recommend lethal momentum. If not, just simply leave it locked. Now we already went over the stats, the critical chance, critical damage, damage and all whatnot, but there is one more thing that you need to understand. The actual elementals on the Hysterix do not combine as you might think they would or should. Let's say for example, Electric Quill. Okay, cool, so if I go Tox on the weapon, put a little bit of Tox on it, that means that right now on this weapon, I got Corrosive if I, if I go Electric Quill, right? And I'm gonna showcase this one really quick. Change from... Okay, we got electric, quill, look at that. As you can see, the procs on our target are not corrosive. The procs on our target are electricity and toxin. That is because the elemental damage from the special quill you get from the uh, weapons mechanic will not be combining, unless of course it's the exact same uh, elemental. So do bear that one in mind. The way this damage works is kind of like this. It takes the base damage of the fire mode you selected, let's say we're gonna be using something like Electric Quill, it's gonna give you that amount as elemental damage with a guaranteed status proc, in this case, Electric. You get how that one works? So you're not gonna be getting yourself combinations, but you're gonna get yourself something nice on top. And with that in mind, let's have a look at a standard build, shall we? Damage with Hornet Strike, Multi Shot with Battle Diffusion as well as Lethal Torrent, Critical Chance and Critical Damage through the combination of Creeping of the Bulls and the Eye, and Target Cracker. Now when it comes to Critical Chance, Critical Damage on Secondary Weapon, there is a small conversation to be had here. You can go for Sharpened Bullets instead of Target Cracker because 60% is simply not all that much. The problem is it's only 75%, so 15% extra, and it's on kill while aiming, yada yada, it's a bit iffy. Target Cracker is simply more reliable. If there ever comes a choice, which should I buy first, Prime Pistol Gambit or Prime Target Cracker, you go for Prime Target Cracker first, so do bear that one in mind. Next, an elemental combination. I recommend you go for Corrosive, but keep in mind, because now we know how the elementals work on the Hysterix, you can have something like Vital Toxin. <laughs> that is actually possible on this one, or Vital Electricity, or Vital Heat, that's totally fine. In this case, what we're gonna be going for is Corrosive and Heat through the use of Jolt and Pistol Pestilence. Pistol Pestilence is very easy to farm from Corrupted Vore in the Void, that's where you get all the 60-60 Toxin mod. As for Jolt, this one is a bit of a pain, can only be obtained from Battle Key Tier, the Void Trader. No, it cannot be farmed from the game. Now if you don't have Jolt yet, you can simply go for the other Electricity mod, you can go for Convulsion. Then it's gonna be totally fine, don't worry about it so much, there's no need to ma min-max at this level. Honestly, in general, it's not really worth min-maxing, but there you go, it's Warframe. As for the last mod, what do we got here? Hydraulic Crosshair for a little bit more crit. This is not necessarily 100%. You can go for something else. For example, a lot of you guys like punch through, right? The bullet goes, or the projectile in this case, goes for multiple targets. It's a form of AoE. It's definitely not a bad idea. Or I can go for more elemental damage. Why the hell not? If I go for heat, if I put Scorch on, then I'm gonna have like this. Check it out. I can have corrosive heat electricity. <laughs> <laughs> on my target. That is legitimately possible because the heat is not going to be combining with the electricity. What else can I have? I can have corrosive toxin electricity. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So again, the options are yours. If you're a man after my own taste, you're probably going to go for headshots. And if you don't know why headshots are important in Warframe, if you don't know location-based damage, hit multipliers and all of that good stuff, pa, I got your back. Link in the card right now for a full and detailed guide on how critical chance, critical damage, and all the multipliers apply in the frame of war. And I do believe that's pretty much it for a base build, yes? Keep in mind, I'm not gonna be using any fancy tricks with my Warframe or my focus schools and all whatnot because I don't wanna make the weapon seem more powerful than it actually is. We're gonna be spawning in Corrupted of the Heavy and the Goons, level 120. And I'm gonna go for a Fire Quill, so we got Corrosive and Heat on my target. What the? Yeah, it's a bug in the simulacrum. I do not know why it does that. A whole lot of procs, a whole lot of damage, and there it goes, my friends. Thankfully, we got a quick reload because the magazine size is not really all that high. 
The performance of the weapon. Uh, the performance of the weapon with normal, average, everyday mods is what I would call decent. Trust me, this is more than enough to get you through the star chart and most, if not all, the content that Warframe can throw at you from a single target perspective. Okay, we're not talking about AoE and all whatnot. I love the orange numbers on the screen, they're absolutely beautiful. To unlock the weapon's full potential, like most often is the case sadly in Warframe, you're gonna need yourself something a bit more powerful in terms of mods and <laughs> accessories, let's say. So this concludes the casual player or the new player portion of the guide. Use this as a jumping off point and try to work into this. We got Galvanized Diffusion on the weapon instead of the normal version, of course this one is gonna be better. We also got Galvanized Shot, this is a single target weapon, so Galvanized Shot should be working fine. What else we got? Lethal Torrent, we kept this one, we still got the 60-60 uh, Corrosive Mods on the weapon, Prime Pistol Gambit, Prime Target Cracker. Now we're gonna be talking about the Arcanes which I mentioned earlier. Should I go for a secondary Deadhead or Cascadia Flare? Both of these will be really good. Now you got 480% damage from Cascadia Flare. The problem with this one, once those 10 seconds are up, full reset, you lost everything. You gotta stack it up all the way again. Thankfully, we do so many shots, so many projectiles into our target, it's gonna be really easy to stack it back up again. Secondary Deadhead is a lot more reliable, especially now that the stacking debuff problem is gone. Okay, so they fixed the problem, it's fine, no need to worry about these anymore, which was pretty concerning. Uh, on precision headshot kill, that's a problem with this one. This one is just on heat status effect, which is simple. This one you gotta kill your target with a projectile directly on a headshot to get that buff. But it does give you for 24 seconds and it's also decays nicely. So if you go out of the 24 seconds, you lose those 24 seconds, you go to a lower stack, it's not a problem. Plus benefit, 30% headshot multiplier. And again, if you know the guide which I talked about, you know why you need to go for headshots and minus 50% weapon recoil. The reason why I'm going for Cascadia Flare is because it's newer and people want to see it. But honestly, if it was me, I would just go for the dead head. Is that it? Ah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, again, no corrosive projection, no anything of the store, no Warframe buffs, the same targets as before. This being a galvanized setup, I'm gonna have to get a couple of cares, which should not do all that. Oh, this is the wrong one. Go for Fire Quill. There we go. Fire Quill. As you can see, Cascadia Flare, if you take a look at the upper right portion of the screen in the buff section, is stacking quite nicely. Let's do something like that. Boom. Beautiful. The extra damage is fantastic. Take a look at that. It just chumps through targets like nobody's business. Beautiful. It's a whole lot more powerful than it was before. The problem is, you kind of go out of bullets really quickly. To that effect, what you can do, if you want to, is forget about Prime Pistol Gambit and go instead for what we talked about earlier, Creeping Bullseye. Okay, this is gonna reduce your fire rate by 20%, give you a little bit of extra critical chance. It's not a horrible idea to go for something like so. Now getting back to our test really quick, it does perform very well on standing still targets, right? But what happens if you take this one to something like Path of Steel? Does it still perform very well? And the answer is yes, but seeing is believing at the end of the day, so... Welcome to the void, my friends, and you will see that the weapon can absolutely tear through whatever stands before it, no problem whatsoever. It might be a single target weapon, but that doesn't mean it's not satisfying, that doesn't mean it's not powerful. Here's your corrupted heavy goon level, whatever, I don't know what level. 135. Absolutely bloody annihilated through the damage mitigation of the little sentinel drone which ran this way. There it is, something like that. The only annoying part to the weapon are the constant reloads, as you can see. It's not that the weapon is not powerful, your magazine size is 16, you can choose to increase it with something like Ice Storm. Ah, not a bad idea, 40% extra, but when your base is low, the increase will also not be that fantastic so do bear that one in mind if you don't mind reloading all the time you're not even gonna be feeding this one because the reload is 1.6 seconds as you saw now we can make the weapon even more powerful than this with some uh, warframe buffs and warframe synergies and who better than lady mirage prime and her outstanding buffs we're gonna go for something like corrosive projection in this case we're breaking out all the tricks corrosive projection however is not mandatory definitely not arcanes however are a lot more impactful Arcane Avenger R5, this one is farmed from the Third Eidolon down on Cetus, if not you can simply trade it from the trade chat, prices have gone steadily down as Eidolon hunting is less and less challenging. 45% critical chance for 12 seconds, bonus additive after simply stacking on top of what you already have, applying to your primary weapon, secondary weapon, to your melee at the exact same time. 
As for a second arcane, you can go with precision for more flat damage. You don't really need this one, you got plenty. But still, another 300% damage is another 300% damage. Fire rate is out of the question considering the magazine capacity, so you can go for something like so. Honestly, in this one you should really have your Warframe Arcane, something like your Energize, your Armor, and all whatnot. But hey, why the hell not? When it comes to companion buffs, you can go for something like a Panzer Full Pofila, which will get you Vital Proc, so you can get on your target Vital, and then you can get Corrosive, and then you can get Heat. It's fantastic, is it not? We're gonna be unpausing the target so they can hit me and I can get my glorious buffs. We're gonna activate and power for Mirage, her free ability Eclipse for an absolutely massive 840%. Bear in mind, 840% Eclipse does not mean 840% damage, it's a whole lot more than that. And finally, the best animation in Warframe, my friends, her ever so lovely clones. Beautiful. We'll switch to whatever quill, it doesn't really matter, but if you go fire quill, you're absolutely gonna tear house. Nothing will stand before you. And this being a projectile-based attack, it sends enemies flying, which is my favorite part. Or it pin them to, well, I don't know where they gone. They're like off the map and all whatnot. The only sin this weapon has is the fact that it's single target. And with that, it's time to draw the conclusion. The Hysterix Prime is a decent buff to the normal Hysterix, but it suffers from the same problem. Nobody really played the Hysterix, not because it's not a good weapon, not because it's not subjectively cool and all whatnot, it's simply a single target weapon in an AoE meta. But my friends, metas change, and right now, even as it is, the Hysterix can absolutely tear house with no problem whatsoever. As always, my name is Blazer. thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. You got some nice perks over there. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.